Hi, are you struggling to develop a serve motion that is professional in quality and really has that beautiful flair to it that you see high performance players use? In today's video, we're going to delve into some of the key concepts that are going to help you develop a serve motion that will be the envy of your friends and your opponents. And in today's video, I'm not only going to present and demonstrate the concepts I want you to develop, but I'm also going to have a student come out and we're going to develop those concepts together. It's really going to help you understand how to build these skills at home. If you stick around to the end, we also have a free gift for you that's going to help you develop your serve into a professional quality weapon. Hi, my name is John Craig, founder and director of Performance Plus Tennis here in Newport Beach, California. In today's video, we're going to break down what the key ingredients are to a professional serve motion and help you get on the pathway to having a great motion. So the first key ingredient to having a great motion is the grip. And the grip that we want to use is a continental grip. And while we're not going to get into great detail today, just make sure that you have your hand on top of the handle so that it's natural to create a straight line from the shoulder to the tip of the racket. And this is what's called a neutral continental grip. And while it may not seem intuitive to use this grip to serve, it is the grip that's going to enable the action and the motion to develop that's going to give you that professional quality range of motion in your serve. So make sure you start with the continental grip, and that's going to get you on track the right way, right from the start. The serve motion itself is rooted in actually a throwing style of motion. And what I do with my students is I run them through a series of drills that really are very similar to throwing. So what I have, have my students do is I want you to do is I want you just to get out and throw the ball and establish an excellent throwing motion just like you're throwing a baseball. And the big difference between throwing and serving is really the angle that you throw on. So when you're serving, you're going to be having all of your energy going upward instead of having a level throw and throwing forward. So after you've thrown a few balls, just baseball style, and you get a nice, easy rhythm, throwing style movement going, change that angle so that it's upward. And you can easily do that by having your tossing arm extend up, and that'll easily put you into an angle where it's comfortable to throw upward. So the next exercise I want you to work on that's going to help you develop the motion is what I call palm to palm. And in the palm to palm exercise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the palm of my tossing hand, I'm going to put it above my head, out in front of me. And I'm going to place the palm of my playing hand so that it's facing my ear. And I'm just going to go to palm to palm. So I've got the palm of my playing hand facing my ear. It's now facing what would be the ball and then it's facing the camera or the side fence. And this movement here is just developing that rotational axis through the shoulder that we want to get. Okay. And then once we've done that a few times, what I want you to do is I want you to advance the exercise so that now your elbow is pointing back, almost in the same position you were either throwing or you're going to serve from. And now the palm of the hand is facing the camera. Then it's going to come in and it's going to face my ear. And then it's going to face the ball or the hand, and then again, the side. So just do that sequentially a few times. Side, ear, forward, side. Side, ear, forward, side. Get that feeling of that action in there. And that's going to help develop this throwing motion and this action that we want on the, on the serve. So after I've done that a few times and got the feel for it, I'm just going to put the ball back in my hand, and I'm going to try to simulate the exact same movement. And it's amazing how much better and how much more energetic my throw and my movement is with that rotation from the shoulder incorporated into the throw. I've activated that movement. So get out there and practice that, okay? And that's really going to help you develop that throwing motion, that action that we're looking for in the surf. So once you've established the movement by throwing the ball, Let's place the racket back in the hand, and this is where the continental grip starts to make a lot of sense. So we get our continental grip, we come up, the palm of the hand is facing the camera, the palm of the hand is facing the ear, the palm of the hand is facing forward, and now it's facing the side fence. And you can start to build this movement slowly by making sure you get every stage of the movement built into the swing. And as you go along and you feel every stage is in there, you can start to increase the speed slightly as you come up over the top. And the swing doesn't need to be fast. It can just be quick 
over the top. And you'll start to discover how you can generate pretty good racket head speed without a lot of arm speed. And that's the key here. You really can't swing your arm fast or hard. You've just got to learn how the technique of the movement creates the racket head speed through the long axis pronation of the shoulder. And then when I'm doing this, I want to feel as though the racket tip is facing the court before I bring the upper arm down. So I want to replace the common movement that looks down over the arm movement and instead let the racket head accelerate over the top point to the court, and then come down. Keep working on this exercise. Build it into your movement. It's going to help increase the range of motion in your shoulder. It's going to strengthen up the shoulder. And it's going to, you're going to find out how it feeds right into your serve. It starts to give you serve motion, that professional flair. So one of the common questions that I get is, do I need pronation on my serve? And, and you know, if you're going to have a professional quality movement, the answer is yes, you do. Um, but the degree of pronation that you get is really changes by player. And some of it has to do with, with the, how much flexibility you have in your shoulder. I personally do not have a full range of motion in my shoulder naturally that enables me to get as much pronation as you see a lot of high performance players have. So I'm a little bit limited in that way. Um, other players have more pronation because they just have a more natural rotation in the shoulder. So it just depends on you as an individual. But the key is, is that if you've got a continental grip, there will be pronation that will enable you to square the strings up on the ball and be able to produce that, produce that racket head speed. Um, so I would say get out and experiment with it and, and you know, understand that you're not going to look like you know, Milos Ranic when you serve, who's got a tremendously flexible shoulder. As an example, Roger Federer doesn't have nearly as much flexibility in his shoulder as Milos Ranic does, but he gets enough pronation to create the action that he needs to perform at the level he performs. So one of the questions that Randy has is, you know, how do I create the pronation? How do I know if I'm doing it? And how do I really build the skill in addition to the exercises we did? So I'm going to give him some insight that's really going to help you at home understand how to develop this skill. So if I just have Randy go ahead and get his continental grip on his serve, and he comes up, what I want him to feel is that when he's coming up to the extension, that as he gets near the extension, the shoulder begins to rotate. The racket's on edge, it's behind the hand, and then the racket's going to advance over the hand and past the hand while the arm is still up. And that is the action you want to build inside. Once he gets here, what I want him to do is relax and let the elbow flex. And let this come down, and then come back to you like that. Okay. I think where most of us go wrong is that we try to force it. So when we come up into contact, we try to force it through, and then it ends up going like this and being more of a push through. And what we want to do is we want to resist the temptation of reaching with our hand forward and instead let this turn over and then drop down. Okay? There really, there really is no power out there anyway. There's nothing out there. So once you get to the contact and you're through right here, you can't help it anyway. So it's kind of a myth to think that when you serve, you're going to have this sort of like stretch or pro projection towards your target. That's really a, a common myth or idea that people have. But instead, what you want to do is keep it right next to you here so the shoulder can have the action and play the serve like that. Okay. So that is a good overview of what the action is and the feeling you want to have. And then you just got to practice it. And I think the best way to practice it is in slow motion. So, you know, the reality is that when the racket's behind the hand, it actually travels from behind the hand, above, and past the hand, while the whole arm is up. So it's almost like a flagpole, where the racket faces a flag that's behind, and there's a flag that's in front. And there's this rotational effect that occurs that creates all that racket head speed, while the arm doesn't really move that fast at all. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. So just try a couple of rehearsals, and just try to rehearse that movement and feel it. Okay? Now bend the elbow. Yeah. Keep the elbow up. Keep the, keep, the sh keep the upper arm up. Yeah. Keep the upper arm up and let it bend. And let it come down like that. Okay. So you do it again. Turn it over. Good. Bend it. There you go. Good. I think that you tend to play with more tension than would be ideal as well, right? Yeah, that's probably one of the reasons. Yeah. yeah. And then this underlying the, the desire to try to force more power uh, it's almost too late in the swing when you do that, when you reach out. And it actually depletes the racket at speed of 
the racket of the speed that you're after as well. So when you're doing this and you're practicing at home, feel like you keep the edge of the racket moving towards an imaginary ball as long as you possibly can so that there's an acceleration right through there as you come onto the ball. See that? You tend to open it up a little bit early and then it slows everything down. Just hold it on as long as you can until you feel like you're almost onto the ball and then as you come onto the ball just turn it through. See that? Yeah. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a movement that is really intricate and, and takes a lot of practice, but it, and the best way to learn it is in slow motion. So the slower I go, the more I feel like I can, I can get the racket to move quickly with no effort, and I get that skill built inside the swing. I hope you really enjoyed and benefited from this lesson today. I had a great time making it for you, and I'm really a fanatic when it comes to teaching the serve because there's a lot of things about the serve that tend to be a little bit of a mystery, and I like to unravel those mysteries and help you develop a professional quality movement. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel here if you've not done so already. Give us a like. Leave your comments down below. Let us know if you have some particular topic you'd like us to cover. We'd be glad to do that for you. And please, while you're here, click in the description down below and gain access to our library of lessons which features the key fundamentals of the serve that you need to master in order to achieve your full potential as a server. And while you're visiting our website, please have a browse around. We've got some free lessons. We also have a membership VIP course, and we also have a serve foundation course that has helped hundreds of players like yourself around the world develop a professional quality serve. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.